Praise the God of creation. Let us sing and shout our praises of thanksgiving and joy to God. Amen. One through twelve. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will not be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes is speaking in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with brittle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are very, so large that it takes strong winds to drive them yet they are so they are guided by a very by a, a very small rudder 
when wherever they the will of the pilot directs. They so also the tongue is a smaller member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as the world of inquinity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, a reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth comes blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grape fine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Welcome to Keolo Mana United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Joy Yoon. Have you ever had an experience where someone said something so mean and hurtful to you that you still remember it like it happened yesterday, even though years have passed? Um, that has certainly happened to me. I remember it like it happened yesterday. Like I was in third grade and there were a few girls in my class that you know were fighting. It was two girls against one. And I remember these two girls were very pretty, very popular. Um, and you know, they were fighting with their friend and their friend came up to me during recess saying, you know, have you seen my two friends? They're mad at me again. I don't know what I did. And, you know, I said, I don't know, but I hope, you know, you guys can work it out. And later when we got to class, I approached the two girls and I said, Hey, your friend was looking for you. I hope you guys can make up and, you know, not fight anymore. Something along those lines. And one of the girls looked at me and said, stay out of this. This is none of your business. And the other girl looked at me and said, I hate you. And I can't believe uh, that she said that to me till this day. You know, when I think about this memory, I get goosebumps. It was like something out of a movie. Like these two girls were really mean and, um, you know, were very, you know, hurtful with their words. And um, I was on the receiving end of that for the first time. And I realized, wow, people could say things like this to other people. People could treat people, uh, e people could treat each other this way. This is so hurtful. And I got to see for the rest of that year how these two girls could be really harmful with their words. Um, so that was my first experience. In today's chapter, uh, James really goes into what it means to tame our tongue. If you remember the past few weeks, we've been going over the book of James. James is the half brother of Jesus. Um, he was the half brother of Jesus and he was one of Jesus's disciples. So throughout Jesus's ministry, he really saw how Jesus lived, how Jesus, um, everything that Jesus taught and you know how Jesus treated the people around him. And James really internalizes this um, in this book and he tells it in the structure of Jewish wisdom literature. So last week he talked about you not showing favoritism and you know how that is really the opposite of the spirit of Christ and really opposite of how Christ lived. And today he's talking about taming the tongue and how the tongue could have a very outsized uh, drastic effect on the world around us and how we really need to be careful of what we say. So he starts off in verse one, really warning people that they shouldn't try to become teachers because once you become a teacher, um, it's a great burden on top of the burden that we already carry um, with the words that we say, even more so if you're a teacher. And he goes on to say something that we really need to look at. Look at. He says, we all stumble in many ways. If anyone is never at fault in what he says, he is a perfect man, able to keep his whole body in check. Now the word perfect is actually teleos and it shouldn't necessarily be translated as perfect. A better translation or a better way to interpret it is mature or whole. And I don't know why English, uh, 
where English translations, the NRSV and the NIV, I believe, translate it as perfect, but it's kind of misleading. It's not saying perfect, it's saying mature, whole, complete. Pretty much saying that the degree to which we can uh, tame our tongues and watch what we say is really a measure of our spiritual maturity. Um, you know, how deep our spiritual uh, insights and how deep our spiritual convictions are based on the words that we say. And that makes sense. If you think about someone who just goes off and says whatever they whatever comes to mind and whether that's hurtful or harmful, they just say whatever is off the top of their heads and they don't think about the repercussions. Well, that person is not going to be Christ-like. You know, that person is not really imitating Christ if they are like that. And he gives two really good examples. He, he talks about a horse and how the bit of the horse, um, which is the bridle around the horse's mouth, controls this huge animal and how a huge ship is controlled by a little tiny rudder. Um, in the same way, our tongue is a tiny part of our whole body, if you think about it, um, but it has such a huge impact on our relationships with other people and on the world around us. So he's really speaking to the early church. You know, when the church first started, they were a loving, sharing, uplifting community. But over time, obviously, you know, he's seen how, how our sinful nature can really be harmful to one another and how people were not wise with the things that they were saying, how people could lash out and be hurtful and harmful to one another. So James is saying, we really need to watch out for that. He gives another really good example. He says, consider what a great forest is set by a fire of a small spark, right? Consider how a little spark can just torch a whole forest. Uh, if we remember this past summer, there was a huge fire in California in San Bernardino County where a couple had a gender reveal party that involved some sort of pyrotechnics and it scorched 23,000 acres of land, 23,000 acres, ruined four homes and actually caused a firefighter to lose his life. So that's, you know, the vivid imagery that comes to mind when I read this passage. Uh, a little gender reveal party, you know, no harm done, a little fireworks, and that little spark, you know, sets off this incredibly devastating fire. And that's what James is talking about. He's saying, you know, uh, the, our words can have a ripple effect because we say it to one person, that person gets hurt, uh, gets really affected by the words that we say, and they pass on that same hurt to other people. So it's just really like a brush fire. When we say things that come easily out of our mouths, it can have a devastating effect on the world around us. And he goes on to um, talk about how humankind has controls so many animals, birds, reptiles, and the sea, um, even more so today in our modern times, you know, we have really terraformed the planet. But even then, as human beings with so much control of, you know, the world around us, so much technology, so many things that we've accomplished as a human race, but at the same time, we have such a hard time taming our tongue. And I think it's interesting how this was written thousands of years ago, but it still applies today. And he goes on to say, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse men who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers, this should not be. So he's saying, you know, if you think about it, we um, praise God with our tongue. And remember, he's talking to other Christians. You know, we, we praise God. We sing praise songs. We, you know, read the scriptures. We do all these holy things, but out of the same mouths, come, you know, hurtful, hateful words. And, you know, we curse other people that are made in God's image. You know, remember the person that you are cursing is someone that God loves, someone that God created, someone with intrinsic value. And again, he's connecting the words that we say to our spiritual state. And he's saying, he goes on to say that um, when he says, can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? Um, he's saying it doesn't make sense that you could sing praises and really mean it. It doesn't make sense that you could read scripture 
and really say that it has an impact on your life when you are being harmful with your words and really hurting people around you. No, your words are an indication of what is in your heart and the state of your heart. Um, and he makes it very clear that the state of your words is a measure of the state of your uh, spirituality. And um, it really reminds me of what Jesus says in Matthew chapter 15, verse 11. He says, it's not what goes into a man that makes him unclean, it's what comes out of a man. It's the things that human beings say to one another that shows what's inside of a person. Now, as a grown adult, I could say, oh, I'm, I'm very cautious of the things that I say, you know, to the people around me. And, you know, I don't lash out with, with my words. But when it comes to my family, sometimes it's a different story, especially when it comes to my 11 year old son. And I notice some of the things that I say when I get very, very frustrated with, with him. Uh, recently, I think this was like a couple months ago, I asked him, you know, I was doing some things with my daughters and I had to get a whole bunch of things done. And I asked him, can you put the dishes um, in the sink, in the dishwasher and run it? And, you know, he said, sure. And, you know, I, for some reason, I had thought the dishwasher was full, but it was actually like pretty empty. And, you know, there were a few cups in the sink. So he rinsed the cups and he put two cups in the dishwasher and then he ran it. And, you know, he was like, mom, I ran the dishwasher. I was like, oh, okay, did you fill it up? You know, and he was like, yeah, there was like two cups. And I was like, wait a minute, it was just two cups and you ran the dishwasher? He's like, yeah. And I was like, I run to the dishwasher. I stop the dishwasher from running and I open it up and there's two cups. And I'm like, you put a dishwashing packet into the dishwasher when it only has a couple things in it. And he was like, yeah, you told me to run it. And, I, and the first thing that came out of my mind, the first thing that came out of my mouth was, what is wrong with you? <laughs> you know, it hit all my buttons, you know, wasting energy, wasting a dishwasher packet, like just, you know, lack of common sense. And it just hit all my buttons. And that was the, what came out of me. And he looked at me and said, mom, don't say that. And I knew I was immediately in the wrong because even though he might acknowledge that what he did was wrong, I shouldn't say something like, what is wrong with you? Because that's, that's really harmful. And that's, you know, really um, not nice. There's different ways that I could have had a conversation with him, uh, but often what comes out of me are, are words like, what is wrong with you? And I've really had to check my impulses, especially when it comes to raising my son. Another thing I think about, you know, um, when I think about this passage was uh, a few years back, um, there was a cult on the island. Um, it was a Christian um, evangelical church um, led by a very charismatic leader and everyone in this church was young. They were, you know, in college or in their mid twenties. Um, and this, um, charismatic leader really had a strong control of their lives. And I, this cult disbanded about five years ago. And I've since met many people on the Island that had come out of this cult. I mean, they didn't know it was a cult at the time. Um, but he did some really hurtful, um, things to a lot of people in this in the church and one of the things that he would do is he would enlist a lot of young girls a lot of times they were very pretty attractive and you know he would invite them to you know babysit his kids or you know um, tutor his kids and you know they would stay you know at his house you know um, really a, a way of him kind of preying on these young women um, well, one of the women, she came forward and she told the church uh, some of the things that he was doing uh, that he shouldn't be doing. And immediately the reaction of the church was to um, blame her for what had happened. Um, and then since then, the cult disp disbanded, you know, more things came into the light, um, really terrible things that this person was doing, that this pastor was doing. Um, and, you know, within the last couple years, I got to know this, this young woman and, you know, I would meet with her, I'd pray with her. Um, I actually met her through my husband's ministry at UH. I would kind of meet with her and help her through the healing process, I guess. Um, and there were certain words that I had in my heart and I just, I felt like God wanting me to tell her something. And these words were in my heart for a long time. And I remember one day meeting up with her at Starbucks and, you know, she was just kind of telling me what her healing journey has been like. And I really felt the Holy Spirit descend on 
our little table at Starbucks and I felt God saying, say the words, say the words that are in your heart. You know, and I just said, you know, there's something that I've been wanting to tell you for a really long time, um, but I didn't know when to say it or how to say it, but I'm just going to say it. And I said to her, you know, as a Christian, you know, as someone who grew up in the church, um, as your sister in Christ, I am so sorry what men have done to you in the name of Jesus, in the name of God's love. They've taken their narcissism and their pride and their sinfulness, and um, you've fell victim to all these things, and you've done nothing wrong to deserve the experience that you experienced. You did nothing wrong. And I said, you know, you're beautiful. God loves you. There is hope in your life. Um, God has bigger plans for you. And I hope you know that you know, I as a Christian, as a sister in Christ, I'm so sorry and I'll do everything in my power so that women like you have a voice and that your um, accusations are valid. And, you know, I just said, I'm so sorry. And then, you know, she started crying. I was crying. We're both at Starbucks crying. And, you know, she said, why is it that someone that had nothing to do with what happened to me can apologize, but people who actually, you know, did what they did um, can't apologize and can blame me. But she said, regardless, thank you so much for saying that. And that means so much to me. And I felt like that was a message God was saying to me, something that God wanted me to hear. Um, so, you know, we, we parted our ways and I remember being in the car realizing, wow, that's the power of words. You know, I didn't, I wasn't there when everything happened. You know, I had just recently met her. Um, but in my words, in some sense, I felt like God was using me to breathe life back into someone. Um, and that's nothing that I'm doing on my own power. That's really God using me. And I hope all of us can understand the power that we have with our words. With our words, we have the power to uplift, to heal, to bring hope into people's lives. And with that same tongue, we have the power, we have the power to tear down people. So I hope all of us can look at James' words and see um, the power that we have with our tongue and use it as an instrument for God's work in the world. Amen. During this pandemic, we really see how words have the power over life and death. Um, you know, we just learned that in James and it just sounds like over the top language, but really during our COVID-19 pandemic that we're going through, it's actually true. I know that there are a lot of people in our country and in Hawaii that are still very hesitant to get vaccinated. One of our good family friends uh, just recently got their first shot after the Pfizer vaccine was FDA approved. And I know there are a lot of reasons why people might be skeptical of the vaccine. I know that our country still has a long way to go when it comes to healthcare and you know the pharmaceutical industry. I can understand why people might be skeptical. 
Um, but the data and the science really shows you are 4.5 times more likely to get COVID um, if you are unvaccinated. You are 10 times more likely to go to the hospital if you are unvaccinated. And you are 11 times more likely to die of COVID if you have not gotten vaccinated. And all the, data is, all the data and the studies show this. I have many friends that are in the healthcare industry right now that are overwhelmed, nurses, doctors, in all areas of the hospital, that are really feeling the brunt of this pandemic. Um, every time, recently I go on Facebook, someone has lost someone they love. Um, my, one of my close friends from high school, her sister just died of COVID. Um, she was not vaccinated. So many people, you know, on Facebook, I see is like one memorial after another. Someone losing someone they love because of COVID. And many times it's because they are not vaccinated. So um, I plead with you, if you are not vaccinated, please go get vaccinated. I've heard some people say, you know, if God wants me, then God will take me. Well, our life on this earth is precious because it is short and fleeting. I absolutely believe when we die, we join God in heaven, but there our work is done. There's nothing more that we can do. Here on earth, we have family, friends, children, you know, loved ones that need us, that depend on us. And I believe all of us um, are called for a higher and greater purpose while we are on this earth. And if we can um, we will all die one day, but if we can avoid it, if we can live as long as we can to live life to the fullest on earth with what God has given us, the resources that God has given us, I hope we can do that. If you are on the fence, especially if you have um, health issues, go get vaccinated. If you need help, resources, a way to get there, please contact the church. Um, you could email kaolumana at gmail.com. You could contact me on my cell phone. If anybody needs help accessing a vaccine or needs a way to get there, uh, we will gladly help you do that. I hope all of us can do our part and please stay safe and get vaccinated. Thank you. We have some quick announcements for today. Um, I'm really excited to announce that um, a pastor friend of mine, someone I've known almost my whole life, Pastor Rich Lee, um, who is the Global Officer of Public Engagement at International Justice Mission, is going to have a Zoom talk with us on September 29th at 3 p.m. Hawaii time. Uh, he's going to talk about um, his work with IJM, and he's just talking going to talk about you know the gospel and social justice and how you know. Uh, being a follower of Christ is really intricately tied to our work in the world. Next week, Wednesday, uh, September 15th, we are going to have a family Zoom Bible study. It's going to be at 7 p.m. We're going to go around and share um, our thoughts on one verse, and we're going to play some games, and we're going to have a great time. It's been a long time since we've got all our families on Zoom together, so I hope we can uh, get together on Zoom while we're in the height of this pandemic um, I hope we could still be connected to one another, have some time talking about uh, a Bible verse, sharing, discussing, and having fun. On Friday, September 17th, we're actually going to have a youth Bible study at church. It's going to be outside. Uh, we're going to social distance and wear masks and all that stuff, but we want to really have an engaging Bible study for our youth and young adults, and the theme is going to be how to read the Bible. So we had one how to read the Bible session some months back. We're going to continue on that series and hope and hopefully go deeper into how do we even start reading the Bible. You know, there are so many books, so many different types of books, and so many different kinds of literature in the Bible that really need um, instruction and training. Um, it really requires instruction and training as to how to read it and how to study it. So we're going to tackle that on Friday, September, 5th, September 17th at 7 p.m. After service, we have our Zoom coffee hour at 10.45 AM. The unfortunate thing about, you know, being virtual is that we can't see each other. And a really important part of our Sunday time is praying together and bringing our concerns, our burdens, our worries to God as one body. We have a UMW celebration event. It's going to be September, September 18th at 10 AM. Um, and it's thanking all of the people that have been 
um, working as officers in the UMW and really um, celebrating the new officers coming up. So it's called Raise Your Light, Taking the Unexpected Path. So that's gonna be Saturday, September 18th at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So another announcement, we had, uh, we've gotten a beautiful card from Keolu Elementary thanking us for our school supply donations. Um, so beautiful card here. And they got our name wrong, Kailua United Methodist Church, but I know it was meant for us because of the envelope. Um, but this beautiful card. And they wrote some beautiful messages just saying, thank you so much um, for, your, for your donation. It says, we appreciate your generous gifts. Um, some of the... Um, some of the messages are, thank you so much for taking, so, for making such a difference in our lives and our students' lives. These supplies will be well used and well lived. We are so grateful. That's Veronica West, fourth grade teacher. Another uh, teacher, she said, mahalo for your generosity. We appreciate so much. It really makes a huge difference for us and our classrooms. Thank you. Angela West, first grade. Mahalo so much for the vacuums and for the tools, sprinklers. I was so happy and so touched by your generosity. Thank you again from the bottom of my heart, Joyce Purdy. I think that was the uh, school custodian. No, it's saying mahalo nui. Thank you for your generous donations to support Keolo Elementary School faculty, staff, and students. Looking forward to continuing this community partnership, Miss Tanaka Principal. So just these beautiful messages, heartfelt, and um, it really goes to show how we made such a difference um, for their school, and we really uplifted their spirits. Again, when we went there with all the supplies um, that our church and Kailua United Methodist uh, provided for them, they were in tears and they were so touched by, by our generous gifts. So we continue to make a great impact in the Enchanted Lake community and to the school right across the street from us. We hope everyone can continue to send in your offerings um, by writing a check to the church or donating through, through PayPal. I hope you know that our ministry continues, our work continues here in Enchanted Lake um, and beyond. So please continue to send your offering into church as our way of thanking God and um, blessing God in return for all the things God has done for us. So hope everyone can send in your offerings. Our Father who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>